it's my great pleasure to talk about extra illicit sonnets. Um, and I should explain a little bit about, about the uh, title. Of course, sonnets. Um, usually these are rhyming poems, 14 lines long, with a very set uh, rhyme scheme. For decades now, I've been writing what I call blank sonnets. So, unrhymed sonnets, like blank verse. These are blank sonnets, unrhymed sonnets. Still, for the most part, ten syllable lines. Uh, probably iambic pentameter, so there's a ghost of classicism in there. Um, and the other reason why I wanted to write these blank sonnets is because, classically at least, sonnets are about love, or about nature, or about religion, and so on. These sonnets are erotic sonnets. But erotic sonnets that cover philosophy and nature, and of course love, and probably even some religious sentiments are embedded in these, in these pieces as well. Um, I haven't counted them. Oh, actually, actually I have. There are 66 poems. Not all of them are actually unrhymed sonnets. Some of them, in fact, are rhymes, uh, but not necessarily sonnets. And there are some pieces as well of just uh, general free verse, ver libre, uh, to give the French title, but, uh, or phrase. But in any event, I wanted to write these uh, uh, conversational sonnets, I guess like I can describe them as well, about this uh, relationship. Uh, between a, uh, a younger uh, uh, brown complexioned uh, uh, male and an older uh, white complexioned female uh, who live in different countries, different on different continents, and whose love story spans these continents and involves a lot of jet fuel and a whole lot of ink in terms of, of the writing. And, and uh, to celebrate their passion. So the poems are actually a narrative, more or less. Um, although it's a narrative about love. So I can't say that there are a whole lot of complications and, and things blowing up or people getting uh, 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 hit by debris, et cetera, et cetera. It's nothing like that. It's, it's more, uh, more or less uh, straightforward, mellifluous, uh, again, uh, erotically charged language, and so on and so forth, uh, to talk about uh, this particular aspect of all of our lives, or I should say most of our lives. Uh, the great poet uh, Robert Bridges, uh, who's a British poet laureate back in the early 20th century, has this line in his, in his poem, his epic poem, Testament of Beauty. Uh, most of our lives we are wanderers in romance. I've always loved that line. Most of our lives we are wanderers in romance. And, and of course, he meant romance in, in terms of romantic uh, literature, in terms of nature, adoration, nature worship, as well as, of course, uh, the passions of the heart. Uh, and so on. But to get to the point, I really, I really like that. I, I think that, uh, for myself at least, anyway, as a poet, I am a wanderer in romance. I'm wandering through romance all the time, uh, looking for inspiration and, and, and feeding off of, of those uh, desires and passions in order to produce the poems. And that certainly is the case for extra illicit sonnets. A couple other points about the poems. First of all, illicit, yes, it does mean <clears throat> the immoral. But it also simply means irregular, different, eccentric. And these sonnets are eccentric because of the fact they don't rhyme, for the most part. But uh, the extra part of the title uh, refers to the fact that there was another uh, set of romantic slash erotic uh, sonnets that I produced for uh, another publisher, uh, Eyewear uh, Publisher Publishing of uh, London, UK, not London, Ontario, London, England. And that set of, of poems came out in 2013. That book was called Illicit Sonnets. And it told the story of Layla and Celine. So extra illicit sonnets tells the story of Luca and Sonia. Uh, so the, the uh, uh, characters essentially, however, are the same, although the names have changed. And I, and I think I can say that probably extra illicit sonnets is a little extra erotic in comparison with illicit sonnets, which, which was, I think, a little bit more philosophical. Not to say that you can always draw a, a hard and fast line between the two. I personally don't think you can, uh, but I know that lots of people, particularly those of particular re religious enthusiasms, might think that they can. But then, even for those folks, I would draw their attention to uh, semi-religious texts such as The Perfumed Garden, 
um, as well as, of course, Kama Sutra, as well as, of course, the Song of Solomon. Uh, so it's really hard, I think, to ultimately say that there's a huge division between the two um, and that if you are someone who, who really follows divinity and believes in divinity, as I hope we all do, uh, probably the highest manifestation of, of that loving adoration is in the process of erotic love. And especially if that is pitched to some extent towards a heavenly um, uh, sensibility. It's been great fun, I have to say, writing these, writing these pieces. I find it a great challenge to try to hone the lines, to make each line sing. And since 2003, and this is now 2015, not to date this tape too much, but I can say, I can, I can truly say it was 2003 when I finally started reading my lines aloud before I let them sit in print. Um, many folks have said over the decades, since my first book came out in 83, that I'm someone who's really good at reading poetry, or my poetry has rhythm, for crying out loud, and there's a beat, etc., etc. And I do perform every now and then with jazz, a jazz band, or with a singer, and some of my work has been put to music, so I admit, yeah, there's a musical uh, side to it. But still, it took 20 years of writing before I finally realized that I really have to read every line aloud before I can really say to myself, I'm satisfied with it and it can now go into print. And I really mean for readers of my work to read it aloud, to really try to feel for themselves whatever uh, energies or emotions are embedded in each line. And, and so uh, that process is exactly the process I've, I've followed with extra illicit sonnets. And, and uh, I'm glad to say that Exile Editions has allowed me to go through several editions of proofs in order to try to get every line uh, in my own ears, my inner ear and my outer ears sounding completely right in my, in my own mind. But still, of course, I hope making sense and conveying some notion of emotion, uh, no rhyme intended, but there it is. Um, and, and uh, to give the reader of the poems, especially again, if you read it aloud, you should have a complete physical experience with the poem in, in terms of feeling it within, uh, the resonances of the words within your own chest, within your own body, uh, and of course, as well within your, within your ears. Um, and ideally, I would love for lovers of whatever background, whatever age, uh, adults, of course, to pick up the, this book um, and read different poems to each other um, on special occasions, and and uh, that's partly what this what this book is for, partly what it's what it's about. Uh, I should say also uh, a word about uh, the great uh, art that is part of this book, and and uh, uh, clear. Wiseman Wilkes, uh, CWW, Claire Wiseman Wilkes, has uh, produced uh, these splendid uh, uh, drawings that are bold, uh, sensational, uh, stunning, uh, and, and uh, definitely erotic, and, and at the same time, just very, very uh, uh, tender, uh, and humane in, ter in terms of the presentation of, of how we go about uh, loving each other uh, sexually. And, and uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the work itself is a, is, a, is a great gift to the book. And I truly appreciate uh, the, the fact that uh, these drawings uh, draw out of us uh, our, our own reflections and, and uh, uh, conceptions of, of how we go about being uh, honestly naked or nakedly honest with each other uh, in those points uh, where, where we uh, need to have, desire to have, and in fact may in fact have a good degree of wondrous intimacy.